One of the greatest limitations in the evolution of generative AI is the unavailability of chips and processors powerful enough to handle AI workloads. NVIDIA's latest AI supercomputers and chips have taken this technology a step further into the future, like the Grace Hopper AI supercomputer, which we'll cover later in this video, so make sure to stay until the end. Our software today isn't just programmed by humans or engineers alone, but by humans working with AI supercomputers. Generative AI is now the order of the day. Usually, GPUs are the prime choice for AI algorithms. This is because of the accelerated computing it brings to the table. GPU accelerated computing has been a very big help for our recent breakthroughs in AI and machine learning. But you see, the more sophisticated the AI, the higher the GPU demand. OpenAI's ChatGPT, for instance, uses about 30,000 GPUs. And this is the same issue most companies face with their AI systems. But Nvidia's new breakthroughs change all of that. Let's start with their innovative GPU for AI, the H100, which can replace an entire room full of computers. Check it out. We have now reached the tipping point of generative AI, and we are so, so, so excited to be in full volume production of the H100. The H100 comprises 35,000 components and eight hopper GPUs. Everything you saw on that system board weighs 60 to 65 pounds and costs around $200,000. Just so you know, Nvidia has already started mass production of this accelerated GPU system, and it's in very high demand. With the way artificial intelligence is revolutionizing industries, every company wants to create its own AI systems, and Nvidia's H100 helps them do so faster and cheaper. Let's take a look at how H100 is produced. The world is currently experiencing two transitions in the computer industry. One is CPU scaling and another is deep learning. CPU scaling is a computer feature that helps increase performance. It's the very reason why our computers are so fast today. But the era of CPU scaling has ended and deep learning, the backbone of new generation AI, is now merged with accelerated computing. These two are the driving forces in our computing world today. Thanks to this merger, the computer industry also transitioned from CPU servers to GPU servers. You see, training large language models or generative AI can be really expensive and time consuming. For instance, 1000 CPU servers would be needed to process a large language model like ChatGPT. This in total can cost around $10 million and consume around 11 gigawatt hours of energy. But with that same $10 million, you can get 48 GPU servers that would consume only 3.2 gigawatt hours and yet will be able to perform form 30 times faster than the CPU servers. Isn't that amazing? GPUs not only increase performance, but also consume less space. See a typical difference in the size of a CPU versus a GPU. Let me just show it to you one more time. This is before and this is after. The world has evolved from building bigger, better companies to building dense and fast ones. Imagine you could do your work a hundred times faster and yet save more energy and money. Now that's a good deal, right? GPUs are the way to go for this. See a typical scenario of how many GPUs it would take to do the work of a thousand CPUs. If your goal, if your goal is to get the work done, and this is the work you want to get done, ISO work, okay? This is ISO work. All right, look at this. 
Accelerated computing is now at its peak, so many domains of science have been affected, as well as several industries. Data processing and deep learning have also evolved, and we now have numerous versions and configurations of GPUs, all with very high utilization. NVIDIA GPUs in particular are utilized in almost every industry, and are always in high demand. From versions like Omniverse to cloud GPUs, none of them are underutilized. Almost all the data centers for these GPUs are overextended because so many apps are using them. And so the world has reached the tipping point of accelerated computing. But that's not all. We've reached the tipping point of generative AI too. And a lot of that is thanks to NVIDIA. You see, NVIDIA made GPUs in such a way that it would efficiently handle tensor processing. Plus, they combined basic GPUs with another type of GPU called MVLinks to build larger supercomputers that could make computing on a larger scale much faster. Thanks to this, NVIDIA AI could go from data processing to training, optimization, and deployment faster than ever. This is the new computer industry. Human brains working with AI supercomputers to build AI. These AI supercomputers are kind of like an AI factory, just like the automobile industry has factories where humans build automobiles from scratch. So too, our computer industry is starting to have AI factories where we can build AI from scratch. With time, every major company in the world will have AI factories where they build their own AI systems, specifically tailored to the industry they serve. We are intelligence producers already. It's just that the intelligence producers, the intelligence are people. In the future, we will be intelligence producers, artificial intelligence producers. And every single company will have factories, and the factories will be built this way. No doubt, AI is the next era of computing. It's growing at a fascinating rate, so much so that we can now apply it to many different fields that were impossible before. But this isn't all we will see with AI. With every computing era comes a new ability to do what was previously impossible. And so, in this new artificial intelligence era, AI is going a step forward from understanding just text and numbers to multimodality. Multimodality here means AI can learn from other modes of communication, like visuals, sound, linguistics, and many more. Which is the reason why this computing revolution can impact every industry, every industry, too. Because this computer doesn't care how you program it. It will try to understand what you mean, because it has this incredible large language model capability. With these new, improved AI forms, you no longer need to be a programmer to do intricate things on your computer. Just give the computer a prompt and say something to it, and it will do amazing things, but in future apps and previous apps. You see, apps like window applications and browsers are already being connected with AI to improve their functionalities. Generative AI will not just change our future, it's changing our past as we speak. And this computing era does not need new applications it can succeed with old applications, and it's gonna have new applications. The rate of progress, the rate of progress, because it's so easy to use, is the reason why it's growing so fast. This is going to touch literally every single industry. If there's one company that's really pushing the limits in making a mind-blowing future with AI, it's NVIDIA. For years, the company has been working on a revolutionary computer processor, a super chip that would transform the computer industry. And now they've just announced it, the Grace Hopper AI super chip. This is Grace Hopper. Nearly 200 billion transistors in this computer. Oh, oh, man's on the... Look at this. This is Grace Hopper. The Grace Hopper is the world's first accelerated computer processor with a massive memory of 600 gigabytes. Plus, the processor can allow the GPU and CPU to work together or reference the memory simultaneously. Thanks to its high-speed memory, the Grace Hopper can work very effectively on extremely large datasets. There's a reason why it's called a super chip. The device uses a DDR RAM like the one used in mobile phones, except that in this case, the RAM has been optimized to handle high, challenging challenging data center applications. So you see, it's more than just a chip. It's more like a computer. But this is where things get interesting. Nvidia has found a way to merge the Grace Hopper with other computers to form one massive AI supercomputer. So let me show you what we're going to do. So the first thing is, of course, we have the Grace Hopper super chip. Put that into a computer. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect eight of these together 
using NVLink. This is an NVLink switch. So eight of this, eight of this, connect into three switch trays into eight, eight Grace Hopper pied. These eight Grace Hopper pieds, each one of the Grace Hoppers are connected to the other Grace Hopper at 900 gigabytes per second. Eight of them connected together as a pod, and then we connect 32 of them together with another layer of switches. And in order to build, in order to build this, 256 Grace Hopper superchips connected into one exaflops. In summary, the company combined 256 Grace Hopper superchips into a single supercomputer. Exaflops is an acronym for Exa Floating Point Operations Per Second. One exaflop is equivalent to one quintillion floating point operations per second. Supercomputers that perform at this level and speed are rare and are used to train artificial deep neural networks. In fact, very few nations have achieved this feat. And so, 256 Grace Hoppers equals one exaflop transformer engine. But that's not all. It also gives about 144 terabytes of memory. The 144 terabytes are not distributed among the different computers, but rather it's what you would call a connected or shared memory. Here's what this supercomputer looks like from production to completion. As impressive as that looks, it incorporates 150 miles of fiber optic cables and 2,000 fans and weighs around 40,000 pounds in total. Imagine a single GPU that weighs as much as an elephant. Well, this is it, the Grace Hopper AI supercomputer. Nvidia is calling this the DGX GH200. And guess what? The first companies to test this new supercomputer will be Google and Microsoft. Surely this giant GPU, the GH200, will push the boundaries of artificial intelligence. But Nvidia is determined to push things even further by producing next generation servers for AI. You see, servers are very important for any AI system. For instance, there were several times when ChatGPT servers were reported to be congested due to the heavy workload from users worldwide. Nvidia hopes to solve this problem by re-engineering and accelerating data centers, especially those working with generative AI. And this leads us to another invention in this regard, the NVIDIA MGX. In partnership with so many companies here in Taiwan, the NVIDIA MGX. It's an open modular server design specification and it's designed for accelerated computing. Most of the servers today are designed for general purpose computing. The mechanical, thermal, and electrical is insufficient for a very highly dense computing system. Accelerated computers take, as you know, many servers and compress it into one. You save a lot of money, you save a lot of floor space, but the architecture is different. One interesting thing about the MGX is that it's multi-generational, meaning it can still serve the next generation GPUs and CPUs. Plus, they've made it quite flexible to handle different domains or data types across various industries. Nvidia's tests with some of their latest GPUs and CPUs like the Grace Superchip showed that the server improves overall performance while allowing for less power consumption. And so this means that it would come in handy for data centers aiming to minimize power consumption without hampering productivity. As I said earlier, servers get congested. Data centers require the cooperation and coordination of different GPUs. In many cases, if one stalls, the entire system gets delayed. That is why Nvidia has introduced a device that can utilize adaptive routing. First, adaptive routing. Adaptive routing basically says, based on the traffic that is going through your data center, depending on which one of the ports of that switch is over congested, it will tell Bluefield 3, to and we'll send it to another port, Bluefield 3 on the other end would reassemble it and present the data to the GPU without any CPU intervention. Second, congestion control. Congestion control, it is possible for uh, certain different ports to become heavily congested, in which case each switch will see how the network is performing and communicate to the senders please don't send any more data right away because you're congesting the network. This feature will improve the overall performance of any data center. And if coupled with other cool components like the Grace Hopper AI supercomputer, the possibilities of such AI systems would be limitless. 
Watch these videos as well. Hit that subscribe button, like, and drop a comment below to let us know your thoughts.